What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be sharing with you these 5 amazing time saving Revit hacks that are going to be helping you on your next project. But before I get into that I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot and if you subscribe if you haven't already because I make useful Revit tutorials each week. Also if you're interested in downloading any of the project files I use in this in this tutorial or any of my previous tutorials. I've got over 300 Revit files so far. Check out my Patreon. Also there I've got some advanced courses and currently I'm working on a project where I show you how to go uh, from start to finish on a project on a simple house project and all of those courses are one hour long. So again as I said first link in the description if you're interested in that. Okay, now let's get into the five hacks. So the first hack is going to be about placing families in Revit projects. And for that, as you can see, I'm using this Revit Cityscape uh, project that I have that I used in my Revit Cityscape tutorial. So if you want to check uh, that tutorial out, also I'm going to be leaving a link to that in the description on how I created this whole thing. But as you can see, within this project, I've got a lot of families loaded in. And all of the families uh, can be placed into your project by using the component tool. So if I go here to the component tool and if I start the component tool you're going to see here in the properties I have this umbrella right now and if I open up the drop menu you're going to see that they have a bunch of these families so I can scroll all day long and there are tons of these families and it's really hard to find a right family especially in a project like this where as you can see I've got a bunch of different families loaded in. So I've got these little houses, these lights, the cars, the plants, uh, the these like trash bins, the ramp, the little lights. So there's so many elements and it's really hard to find it here in the component tool, especially because it's not categorized as, for example, furniture or maybe planting or lights or something like that. No, it's all just uh, just just a bunch of elements. So in order to save time on these projects, what I suggest you do is not to go to the component tool, but instead, when you want to place a family, go to the floor plan where you want to place it. And then just what you need to do is to go here, just scroll down in the project browser and find your families. And then you open up the drop menu and as you can see, all of the families here, if I maybe expand this menu a little bit, all of the families here are properly categorized. So if I want to find uh, maybe some furniture, I just need to search for furniture and then I open up all of the, to see what are the families here listed under furniture. So that umbrella, for example, here it is. And if I want to place that umbrella, I can even open up the drop menu to see which types of, um, of this family do I have. So family types are listed when you expanded the menu. Now in this case, this is all, all we have. But for example, for a, let's see, do we have a, a desk? Okay, so for example, for this desk, we have two types, two family types. But let's say we want to place one of these families. So for example, this table I want to place. So I can just select it here and drag it over into my project and just place it wherever I want. So I don't have to search all the way over here in my component tool and then search for whatever I want to find because it's a nightmare to find it. You can always go here in the project browser where it's all properly categorized and just find the family that you want to use. Okay, so that was tip number one. Let's move on to tip number two. And for that, I'm just going to be starting a new project. So just go here to file, new, new project. Uh, let's go with an architectural template, hit OK. And there we go, we've got a new Revit project. Now in Revit 2019 and newer, you're going to notice that all of the uh, all of the uh, opened uh, views are tabbed like this over here. But the problem is now we have two opened projects and they're all tabbed over here. So if I open up a few more views, for example, level two, maybe an elevation and a 3D, I don't really know which project is which. Maybe if I go over here and if I open up another, uh, perhaps another floor plan, and let's go first floor, and now it's over here. So now I have no idea which project is which, and I'm completely confused. So what I like to do in this case where I have multiple projects opened up in Revit is I like to take this project. So I like to go just to down to two tabs and then take one of the projects and just un, uh, kind of undock it and then dock it over here to the side. And now here we have 
or the, the new project and here I have the existing file. So now if I go to this, uh, perhaps this file over here and if I open up a new floor plan for example, it's going to open it up on this here in this here window. And if I go to this project and if I open up something else, it's going to open up in this window. Now, of course, you might be thinking, well, now you don't have any space here and it's uh, you're kind of limiting your uh, screen real estate. Well, what you can do is just drag this over to the other side and now you can work on this project. Once you're done working on this project, you want to go back to this one. You just grab it here, drag it to the other side and now you can work in one of these files. And all of the new tabs that you open up will be properly docked in one of these two windows. So that's a great way that you can separate your projects. Okay, moving on, let's talk about tips and tricks for massing and for creating a building out of a conceptual mass. So for that, what I'm going to do is just go to this new project that we have opened up over here. I'm going to go to South Elevation and maybe drop this level down to 3000. Let's add a few more levels. So just go to level offset 3000 and oh, let's use the backline tool and yeah let's do a few more of these okay so we've got a few levels now i'm just going to go perhaps into 3d it's the simplest go into massing inside go into show mass place and let's create a new in place mass i'm just going to do a simple rectangle go create form and just extend it all the way up Okay, so we've got just a simple form. Probably if you're working on a new project, it's going to be a larger or more complex than this. But for now, let's just go with something like this. Okay, so now you want to add some floors. So for that, I'm just going to go here to mass floors. Just select uh, one through six, hit okay. And there we go, we've got our mass floors. Now, usually in buildings, especially when you're in the massing phase, you want to get an accurate estimation of what's the actual uh, number of square footage or square meters or the actual area of all of the floors or some of the floors or all of the floors combined. That's really important. Usually you have some regulations and your building needs to fit into that. Well, to help you along with that, what you can always do is go to here to schedules and quantities, right click, go new schedule, and then uh, just go here into, let's see, do we have mass? Okay, here we have mass, open that up and here we have mass floor. And you just need to open that up and let's just go here with area, let's find it. So floor area, just load that in as the only parameter. I don't really need anything else. And there we go. And I can also undock that view, place it maybe here and then maybe drag it to the other side and there we go so now if i select this mass and play around as you can see the numbers here will change so if i make any changes to the actual model you're going to notice that here we're losing some levels or we're gaining the levels or we're uh, changing the numbers so you can play around with this mass in the project and it's going to update uh, here in your schedule so just by having that schedule you can make sure that you're fitting into all of your regulation the next step is turning off your drag element on selection option so this is more uh, in a sense of time saving by you're not going to be making any mistakes or accidents so it's going to save time on that end so let's say we want to create a cross selection so just a cross selection like this but if you accidentally click on an existing element and go to do a selection you're going to move it so this is really annoying okay in this case it doesn't mess up the file that much but if I were to open one of uh, a file like this over here and if I were to do something like that it would really mess things up so what they like to do in order to prevent that is to open up here underneath the modify tool you have this select options and you can open up the drop menu and here we have the option of drag element on selection and if you uncheck that and let's go back to the same file and if you go over here and then pull it as you can see you're not moving it you're actually creating a drag selection so there you go, that's going to save you a lot of time by not messing up your projects when trying to do a drag selection. And for the next tip, or in the last tip, I'm going to be showing you how to use plan regions so you can view windows and elements that are not being cut by the cut plane even in that floor plan. So what I'm talking about. 
Here, if I go here to the level 00, zero floor plan, and as you can see over here, we've got a window over here, and here in the kitchen, we don't really have any windows. And if I open up one of these uh, sections, let's open up this one, and as you can see here, we have this window. Now, the cut plane for that uh, level 00, zero floor plan is cutting at the default setting uh, in Revit, which is at 120 centimeters. So if I go here to the Annotate tab, go to Detail Line, and let me just place a detail line to demonstrate where that is going to be cutting. So let's go set that at 120 and there, go, and there you go. So it's cutting through this, that's why we can see all of these uh, kitchen elements. Now if I place a window that's above that cut line, it's not going to be visible. So let me explain that or show that in practice. So if I go into 3D, uh, let's orbit around. Here's that kitchen area. And I'm just going to go here to architecture window. Let's use uh, one of the smaller windows like the 600 by maybe 600 by 1200 or no. Do we have 1200 by six? No. Okay, let's go with this one then. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going to place it like this over here. And let me just see the sill height is now at 140 centimeters. So, so that's uh, from ground. And if I go here into my uh, floor plan, you're going to notice that here is where the window is. Maybe we can move it closer into the section like this. So it's visible right now, but as soon as I deselect it, as you can see, it's not going to be visible anymore. If we hover over it, it's going to light up when we get to it, but it's really not going to be visible in any other way. And if I go here into that section, as you can see, here's that cut plane, and now this window is above that cut plane. Also, we have a problem here with insulation, but let's fix that a bit later on. So this window being above the cut line, it's not going to be visible. Well, let's fix it. Let's make that window visible. So what I'm going to be doing is just go here back into floor plan 00. And what I'm going to do is create a, a plan region. So you just go here to view, you go to plan views, open up the drop menu, and here we have plan region. This tool allows us to change the view range properties for a certain area in our floor plan. So if I just go over here and just for this part of the wall, create this window and set the view range with the cut plane going instead of 120, let's set it at 160. Just hit apply, okay, hit finish, and there we go, we can see that window. And our plan region is visible as this green line, but this being a green line, that means it's not going to be visible when printing, so don't worry about that. And, uh, or uh, you can always hide it if it is visible. And there you go, now you can see this window, even though the cut plane isn't really cutting through it, if we go into VR for view range for this view, it's going to be still at 120, but here, just in this region, it's going to be set at 160. So that's how you can use the plan region in order to change the view properties or the view range properties of a certain part of your floor plan. And that's how you can make uh, views like this where you can see even stuff that's above that. Okay, so th that concludes this uh, video of uh, time saving tactics or hacks in Revit that you can use well to save your time. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you want to download any of the project files that I have used or created in this video, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. Also, if you want to get access to some of my advanced courses, I've got 15 so far. Again, as I said, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. Okay, so that concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.